Well, a veteran newsman that touched the lives of many in our area passed away over the holiday weekend. When we return, Dave Yonkai from the Lulac Political Letter takes a look back at the life and career of former WBRE and WYOU reporter Kevin Jordan. David Yonkai from the Lulac Political Letter is back with us today, and we have a sad occasion to talk about. We normally focus on politics, but today, the late Kevin Jordan passed away over the weekend, the holiday weekend. He was a veteran, a news broadcaster, reporter in the area. Dave, good to see you on the show today. Good to see you. Happy to be here. Well, let's talk a little bit about Kevin. He had a 25-year career, um, you know, in television and other forms of media in our area. Talk a little bit about what made Kevin stand out. I think the most amazing thing that a lot of people don't realize about Kevin is that that he was a phenom. He actually, at the age of 19, worked at WARM, which at that time was the, the biggest, time. most powerful they news radio station in northeastern Pennsylvania. And that's how he launched his career at uh, WARM. And he was, like, very young to do something like that. There were people who were, you know, like 10, 15 years older than he was who were still trying to get into WARM when he was in there. So that gave him a good foundation for reporting. He learned a lot at WARM, but he also contributed a lot when he was at WARM, too. I, I was talking with some of our uh, veteran staff here at the station that, that knew Kevin way back when, uh, our director Sandy, one of our producers, Jane, and they said one of the things about Kevin is he always had the knack for getting the big story, kind of getting the scoop and being the lead story of the night. Any major story that, that he covered that really stood out to you? Well I, well, I think the question has to be asked, is there any story that he didn't cover? Because right around the time of the 1980s, there was the Iranian hostage situation. There were two uh, people from our area who were a hostage is there, Michael Matrenko and uh, Bruce German. And the way that he handled the family standing on their front porches when they were trying to get news from that, that was incredible. Uh, the other thing was the George Banks murder trial. And that still carried on. He joked that that carried on until the time he was out of broadcasting with all the appeals that Banks had. And there were um, numerous other stories uh, that he covered in northeastern Pennsylvania. Now, I never met Kevin personally. I had the pleasure to live across the street from his uh, children for a okay. while, which was kind of exciting. Now, in your interactions, Dave, with Kevin, what do you remember most about him? Two things that I have to tell you. The first thing was he always said that in order to be a good reporter, you had to be a good parallel parker. And he was the most amazing parallel Parker Parker I've ever seen. One time I was at a meeting with him. We were, I, I bummed a ride up with him in his car, and we parked at a place in Scranton that when we got out of the car, he parked that car so magnificently that I think that you could put a dime in between the two bumpers that he actually parked between. You know what I mean? It was like so tight. I said, how did you do that? And he just looked at me and said, magic. The other thing that I want to talk to you about, which I think is the bigger legacy of Kev Kevin Jordan, is his audience. Somebody had said to me I, over the weekend, actually not somebody, a few somebody said to me over the weekend that whenever Kevin Jordan was giving a report on the air, they basically would never dream of changing the channel because they wanted to see exactly what he had to say. And unfortunately, as we know, that voice is now still, but he's going to be missed by so many people in the area. Well, he certainly had that, uh, you know, authoritative nature to him where you just kind of, like you said, wanted to tune in. And if Kevin Jordan was on, it was important. The story was big. The story was important. Now, for those uh, of our viewers that, uh, you know, remember him from his days at either WYU, WDAU back in the day, WBRE, he does have a viewing tonight and then funeral services tomorrow, correct? Right. Five to eight over the Mayor Collins Funeral Home. That's right on Maple Street in Kingston. And then the funeral is going to be Caddy Corner right across the street at St. Ignatius over in Kingston. So he was a Kingston boy. He was at Holy, and uh, not Holy Redeemer, it was the um, uh, Central Catholic. Queensman, and he was the voice, he was always proud to say that I was the voice of the Central Catholic Queensman in Kingston, when uh, Central Catholic High School. And I'll say newsmen like him, newswomen for that matter, you, you just don't kind of see those kind of people in the business. Anymore. You really don't, and it's amazing, because I always think that he was like the bridge between the pioneers uh, reporting, you know, the old guys like Franklin D. Coslett and some, and John ben, John Bendick, and the new reporters that we have on um, various stations, I see him as like the bridge between those two eras. All right, David Yonkai from the Lulac Political Letter. I know there's more about your political letter online, including an article with Kevin Jordan. You can see that. Thank you so much for being here today. My pleasure.